And welcome to A Livelihood. I'm your host, Karma Kikai. And today we have Louise Weinberg, who has shifted careers a few years ago, and she's going to tell us her story. Hello, Louise. Hi. Very nice to be here. Yeah. It's great to have you. So I'd like to find out your perceptions of how you made this big transition. And you and I have something in common, as we both have been, and I still am, working as a psychotherapist. But you did that for many years, mm-hmm. and can you tell us a little bit about what that was like for you? Well, I was a, a clinical social worker, and I did that for 22 years, um, very happily, I must say. It was something I wanted to do ever since I was little, and I, I always say the first 18 years of my career was wonderful, and the last four years weren't weren't so great, so I think it was just, Hmm. it felt like time to do something else. What do you suppose shifted for you at at that point? Well, I had already started developing my interest in art and doing more and more art, and Mm -hmm. for a number of years I tried to practice, have my practice and do art, and since I'm very, very focused, it it became increasingly difficult to do both together. So let me just back up a moment, though, Louise. I'm wondering, because you said that you think you you knew from a very early age that you wanted to be a social worker mm-hmm. or be a therapist, right? What What do you remember about that? Well, I, d- I just remember growing up in a, in a pretty traditional family with, pa- with parents who were quite a bit older, and I remember that the only thing girls were really encouraged to do would be teachers or nurses or social workers. Um, Mm-hmm. Not doctors or lawyers or anything like that. So, mm-hmm. and not artists. And <laughs> not no, nobody was encouraged. There were there were quite a few artists in my family, but none of them did it exclusively. They all did it uh, kind of as a hobby on the side. Mm-hmm. Some of them were very good. Mm-hmm. I, I also started. I started. I first I started to draw for a couple of years, and then I started to paint because I, I felt you should know how to draw before. You, you start painting, which is not necessarily true, but I had that in my mind. Mm-hmm. And then after painting for a number of years, I decided I, you know, I really wanted to get an art education. I, I was fortunate enough at that time to be able to decide to close down my practice mm-hmm. and so retire. when was that that you actually closed um, your practice? I started trying to do it in 1994, and I actually ended in 1997, so it took mm-hmm. me three years. Mm-hmm. And then I applied to the museum school, school of the Museum of Fine Arts, and was accepted. Mm-hmm. This is in Boston. In Boston. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. was accepted as a third-year student. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. As a third-year student, meaning you didn't have to do the first two years. Yeah. Wow. That's basically because you had kind of taught, taught yourself. myself a lot. They look at a portfolio. Mm-hmm. But, I, so, but I went there you know, part-time and then full-time for a number of years, and I graduated with a four-year diploma. So as we look at some of the pictures on the screen here, um, I know you're saying some of your early pictures were about eggs, certainly a a container. So you said you were very interested in that, and you like to think psychologically. So say more about that. The eggs were about, I I realized as I painted them, I I always painted and then would analyze things after. I never planned anything, but I could see Mm. that the eggs were about fertility and and rebirth, and um, the eggs stood, were stand-ins for people. First they were whole, and then I started cracking them and and looking at the yolks at the inside, and that was another metaphor for a person, you know, with a a Mm. shell on the outside and the rawness that's on the inside. Mm. I made all sorts of paintings where the eggs were stand-ins for people. It, it, the eggs mm-hmm. had yearnings for each other, and they reconciled with each other. And they, mm-hmm. um, they, they, the titles, you know, were, were very important in those pictures. Mm-hmm. But I, I grew increasingly, and they were wildly popular. Mm-hmm. I sold 18 paintings in one day when I when I was making those eggs. Mm-hmm. But um, it, for me, and, and it was not what I wanted to be doing. And and what I learned in school is the process of making it that's important and not the product. And the product was beautiful and mm-hmm. everybody wanted the product, but I wasn't so happy mm. with the process of making it. 
Mm. I would rather work abstractly and not know from the start what my finished product is going to look mm. like. Because mm -hmm. that to me is the surprise factor, and that's what's interesting. Mm. Yeah. So would you say, though, Louise, that even in the later work, there are issues of containment seem to oh come yeah, up? Oh, yeah. I, it's o always that issue of containment, and I mm -hmm. think containment is, is a, in a dual, dual type of way. It, it can be positive because it's protective and nurturing, like a uterus is a container, mm -hmm. um, but it can be imprisoning. So, and it, and it can sometimes be both in the same time. You can have that in a marriage where it's, mm -hmm. it's containing, but someone feels imprisoned at the same time. So, mm -hmm. that that little theme has been there in my work. No matter what I paint, you know, I went on to, to paint um, abstracted building scapes, and that had to do with growing up in an urban environment mm -hmm. and looking out the window and seeing nothing but buildings and windows and rectangles. Mm -hmm. And you said you grew up in New York City. Yes. Right. Yeah. And, and I said that I believe that your childhood landscape gets scorched into you. Mm -hmm. And I know the painter Agnes Martin said something similar to that about growing up with a, a wide open horizon and all her work. Mm -hmm. People know her. Very different from yours. Yes. <laughs> very, very minimal and very, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Mine was very packed in, mm -hmm. and um, if I did buildings for quite a while, and then I, then I shifted back to spheres again. I didn't do eggs, but I, w I went back to, to round objects. Mm -hmm. and so this was, was this, you still consider this to be m your more representational period? Uh, no, I, once I left the eggs, that was the end of, of real realism for me. Mm -hmm. and that these were more abstracted images. Mm -hmm. And since my mother has become closer to dying this past year, I found myself drawn back to the building. I've been to New York so many times that I've, I, I've been drawn back to the buildings of New York, and I'm, mm -hmm. I've, I'm back to doing buildings again. Mm. What are, why don't you talk about some of the other series of of paintings that you've been doing? Um, well, uh, there was a sphere series which, um, in which the sphere was very much connected to the, the, the teachings of Carl Jung, mm -hmm. which my husband and I got very interested in, and, and we mm -hmm. put on a show together um, based on Carl Jung, which mm -hmm. was very successful, and it's going to, the Jung Institute in Boston is actually going to sponsor it, 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 it will be shown again mm -hmm. in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, so in what way is it connected with Carl Jung's work? Well, because the, the title of our show was called Emergence of Self in Midlife, and that is really what Carl Jung talked about, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. begin the first half of your life you're figuring out where you belong and what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, and mm -hmm. it's in the second part of your life that you can really find out what, what your passion is mm -hmm. and, and what you're meant to do. And that was just so true for us that we felt very strongly that we wanted to do a show about that. Mm. And mm. so we, I did paintings and he did photography. Mm -hmm. And my sphere series uh, was all done for that particular show. But mm -hmm. once that show ended and I started traveling to New York, I was drawn back to New York City again. I called it Back to Square One. Mm -hmm. yeah. back away from circles, back to squares. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in, though, how you really bring in your psychology, your background, your understanding of human development well, I mean it's into your picture. It's, mm -hmm. it's very much there. I mean, it makes me uh, um, able to, to make a work and then look at it and examine it and see and understand what it's about. Mm -hmm. And also when I teach and I, and I do teaching, I, I definitely use my psychology background. Yeah. Yeah. Doing and working with students and working with working with them on their inner critics, mm. which I do believe everyone who makes art struggles with. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you be for, first time. for being here on the show, Louise. I'm well, so very interested in your perspective, pleasure. especially coming from my background as a, as a therapist myself. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for having me.